I'd like to welcome you to the 2015 President's General Assembly. I am Gary Westbrook, the Director of Athletic Bands here at Tarleton. I would like to ask you to stand while the Tarleton State University Chamber Choir comes to the stage to sing the Tarleton State University Color Song. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2015 General Assembly. I have to tell you, I love starting the assembly with so many students on stage because it is a terrific reminder of what it is that we are all about. And to have the Sound and the Fury, the Chamber Choir, Dr. Gary Westbrook and Dr. Troy Robertson begin our ceremony is the appropriate way for us to begin the new year. Would you thank Dr. Westbrook, all the students, and the choir, and Dr. Walt Robinson. Thank you so much, guys. Well, I guess the beginning is Happy New Year, right? Our Texan marching band and the choir has clearly set the right tone for us today and for this new year. Excited, energetic, and I think filled with the Tarleton spirit and our purple pride. I'll tell you this, I know I am excited about this new year and I've been energized over the last couple of weeks because of our talented students that have been here during Transition Week and all the great activities we participated with them over the summer. We had a terrific start to the year, thanks to the planning and the execution of so many of you here on this campus. And when things like the unexpected happen, uh, rain, Bobby, in uh, Integrity Hall, already very, very busy people just pitched in and did what they needed to do to get things ready for the uh, new students. I'd like, because there was so much activity, so many people that have participated in all these things, I'd like to have anyone who participated in or attended our Texas tours, our orientation, duck camp, Texan camp, move in, did you help load some boxes, transition week, and convocation and candle lighting, if, if you've participated in that or, or helped to make it happen, would you all stand so everybody can see what it takes to make this new year begin? Thank you, folks. You can see that it does indeed take a lot of people to make this happen. I expect all of you have heard or you've seen this uh, many, many times already. It's our vision statement to become the premier student-focused university in Texas and beyond. The reason we had so many students up here is I wanted a great visual of what this vision statement says. And I think it's important to ask as we begin a new year, why is it that this is important to it? 
to us and what does a student-focused university look like. And if we had the right forum, I would love to ask all of you to participate in answering that question. But since it, it's not the right kind of environment, what I'd like to do is tell you what I think are the four major points that we need to talk about. A, uni a student-focused university provides academic programs that are both innovative and relevant. That should sound somewhat familiar because our strategic goal, one of our four strategic goals, is academic innovation. And you can think about all kinds of examples that demonstrate that. The Center for Instructional Innovation and our faculty fellows, the New School of Criminal Justice, Criminology, and Strategic Studies. Those kinds of things meet this in an important way and help us to remain student-focused. A student-focused university, I think, also provides activities and a culture that supports the growth of our students academically, socially, physically, and of course, mentally. And when we think about how it is that we transform student lives, our second goal, clearly one of the most important things that we are doing these days, and you're doing such a wonderful job with it, is demonstrating and talking to our students about things like our core values, those six core values that we want our students to leave with leave this university with so they understand not only how they should operate as a Tarleton Texan, but as a world citizen. Student-focused university, this is the third part, offers services that provide assistance and promotes success. That is the goal that we talk about called exemplary service. And I'd like to highlight a particular group that demonstrated how you can change and how you can go from being the program that received the single most complaints in the president's office in a single year to the one that I did not hear one after one year of change and leadership and management of the program. Javier Garza and Kathy Wright, uh, are you here? If you are, I would like you to stand because you have done a remarkable, <laughs> remarkable job. There's Javier. Thank you so much. <clears throat> There is probably no thing that is more important to our students outside the classroom than financial aid, and these folks really made a remarkable turnaround. That was exemplary service. And then finally, a student-focused university prepares graduates to be productive and effective leaders and citizens in their careers and their communities. That's our goal of community engagement. And you can think of so many different examples of this, things like service learning opportunities in the Dominican Republic, or the new Office of Academic Outreach and Engagement by Danae Doris. You can go down a long list to talk about those things. We are seeing a lot of evidence of our student focus all around us. Just walk the sidewalks here at Tarleton. More people, more students than ever are wanting to come to Tarleton. And you can see that reflected in our student en enrollment, which was 12,396 on Monday. That's the largest enrollment ever in Tarleton's history. Now, let me tell you, one of the important things to me and one of the very important things that is reflected on this is not only have we had large entering classes in the last couple of years. This year, it's been basically a flat class, and I think that is a, honestly a good thing because we didn't have any place to put them. But what's more important is what these numbers reflect, I hope you see this trend, is that we're also uh, retaining students at higher rates and graduating students at higher rates. That's why those numbers in sophomore, junior, senior uh, levels are up from prior years. That is a very, very good trend line. And obviously, it's terrific to see 31% increase in our doctoral students. Now, you know that the quality of a Tarleton education in an, is enhanced by the activities of our students themselves. And that's the reason, again, why we had some up here at the beginning, and it's the reason why we have some with us today. So what I'd like to do is introduce several student groups who achieved excellence in recent months. And so I'd like the representatives, their coaches, faculty, uh, mentors, if you would all come up. The rodeo team, the track team, the aeronautical team, and the student chapter of the Wildlife so uh, Society. Come on up to the stage, guys. <clears throat> All right, let me begin uh, uh, with uh, the folks with the hats. How about that? 
Yeah, you know these guys, don't you? These are your college national finals rodeo champions under the, the uh, co uh, coach by uh, Mark Eakin. Let me tell you who a couple of these folks are. Landon Williams represented us so well. He was not only there scoring points for us, but he was the all-around cowboy in the national finals. <laughs> That, that is, Landon, I want you to know, you didn't say anything, and these people never did that for me. <laughs> but uh, Landon was the all-round cowboy, and he was a champion in tie-down roping. He is a senior in ag industries and, uh, and agencies major. Uh, Jace Lane, wave your hand over there, Jace. He's a little bitty guy, but Chase was the second in saddle bronc and third in steer wrestling, and Chase is a sophomore animal science major. Cody Lamb, what? Tip your hat there, Cody. Thank you. <laughs> Cody was third in bareback, and he's a senior psychology major. And then uh, Brody Cress and Ryan White are both agribusiness majors. Brody is a sophomore, and Ryan's a junior. Ladies and gentlemen, your national champion men's rodeo team. Second group I'd like to introduce is your Tarleton track team, a couple of members of the track team. They had their best year ever under Coach Pat Ponder and Justin Hobbs. Let's begin with Euphemia Edom. Where is Euphemia? Yes, ma'am. Euphemia was the first Texan to win a national championship, and she did it uh, going away as, uh, as a long jump champion. In addition to winning the national champion, she was the Lone Star Conference Indoor and Outdoor Female Athlete of the Year. And uh, we're very proud to have Euphemia here as a graduate student in kinesiology. Her plans are to be in the Olympics in 2016, and I will not go <laughs> Now, Chase Rathke, Chase, wave your hand. <clears throat> Chase is an outstanding young man. He was a national champion in the 1500 in 2014, and he missed his second national title by tenths of a second this year in 2015. But the good news, and we didn't have an opportunity to recognize him last year, so I thought it is only fitting somebody that came within a tenth of a second of, of winning two in a row needed to come back here. And the good news is that he's a senior majoring in, uh, majoring in kinesiology, and so Chase is indeed going to chase his second title again next spring. Congratulations to Chase. And then we have our men's 4x4 relay team, who are your national champions as well. Congratulations to them. We have Terrence Gross, a freshman uh, criminal justice major. Clarencio, Clarencio Gario, a junior management major. Cameron Kirk, a senior management major. And Gilson Umanakwe, a freshman pre man major. Pre man, yeah. Let's congratulate Coach Ponder, Hobbs, and the entire national champion group of track stars. Now this next team also knows a little bit about speed and propulsion. Our aeronautical team placed second 
in the NASA Student Launch Centennial Challenge at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Their advisor, uh, you know him, get up there, Dr. Bo Browner, department head in mathematics. This year's challenge, listen to this, was building a Mars ascent vehicle capable of picking up a sample on the ground, storing it in the rocket, then launching the rocket at least 3,000 feet in the air, and then landing the sample and getting it back safely. Now, that is, that is a remarkable, <laughs> that is remarkable, and if you saw this, it, it just is stunning. I think the members of the team with me, uh, with us today, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Bo, this is what I've got. Grant Gregory, a freshman in mechanical engineering major. <laughs> Michael Dagrapont, a senior in a, interdisciplinary studies, middle school math major. Andrew Ulbrich, a sophomore engineering physics major. <laughs> Cody Bedwell, a sophomore mechanical engineering major. <laughs> Jordan Dornack, a freshman electrical engineering major. <laughs> Grayson Gregory, a senior agricultural science with teacher certification major. <laughs> and Rodrigo Rangel, a master student in mathematics. Now, did we miss a couple? No. Did we get them all? Oh, yeah, Dustin. Our student well, we, we know Dustin. Everybody knows Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> He's been here before. Now, you need to listen to this, too. The prize for being one of only two teams who successfully completed the mission was $15,000. Congratulations to the aeronautical team. Great job, guys. So the last group I want to introduce is our student chapter of the Wildlife Society. They took first place in the quiz bowl competition at the statewide annual meeting of the Wildlife Society. They're coached by Dr. Heather Matthewson here, Assistant Professor of Wildlife uh, Sciences. <clears throat> As you can see, there were 19 members who were tested on their wildlife knowledge and their field skills, and I believe that this, uh, this uh, victory for them, uh, this award for them, really demonstrates the extraordinary work that is going on in our wildlife program and that these students are competing with the very best in the state. The, the students that represent the Wildlife Society are Kristen Stewart. Hello, Kristen. Alan Williams. And Ty. I can't remember. Ty? Trey. Trey. McClinton. Trey McClinton. Now, they snuck in on us. That's not what I was given. I want you to know that. Now, but I do want you to know this, too. This, in some ways, this is really a personal victory for me because it happens that my daughter is the uh, lead advisor for the uh, Department of Fisheries and Wildlife Science at Texas A&M University. And so, I get to talk to her smackdown all the time now about what a great wildlife society we have. Congratulations, Sarah. As the students leave, let's congratulate them, their coaches, and their faculty members one more time for outstanding success. Well, in addition to all of these students today, we also have the pleasure to welcome the new Vice President for Student Life, Dr. Laura Broren. She's been here about five weeks now, I think, and she certainly not only hit the ground running, but I would say she hit the ground sprinting because she has had plenty to do over the last couple of weeks. Dr. Boren, will you please stand and allow us to give you a, wel a welcome to Tarleton. Thank you, Dr. Boren. Thank you. You know, when Tarleton uh, joined the Texas A&M system back in 1917, the university instituted a Corps of Cadets. And the core tradition is being reestablished. And I should tell you, unlike earlier years, 
it's going to welcome both men and women into the core ranks. That's a good thing. Being a member of the Corps is going to provide our students with an applied learning experience, most of you know that as an ALE, in leadership with an emphasis on developing students with integrity, intellect, and initiative. And we're very fortunate that the Corps is going to be headed by retired U.S. Air Force uh, Colonel Kenny Weldon, and he is known as his honor also, the mayor of Stephenville. And so Mr. Mayor, uh, Commandant, Colonel, uh, your many titles, please stand and allow us to welcome you to Carleton. We are also welcoming, welcoming the new commander of Tarleton's ROTC program, Lieutenant Colonel Marty Deckert, who joined us in April. He's been gone, I think, pretty much ever since and only recently came back. He comes to us from three years at Joint Base Pearl Harbor, uh, Hickam in Hawaii. He's a combat veteran in both Iraq and Afghanistan and a very much decorated Army officer. Lieutenant Colonel, please stand and allow us to thank you for coming. Now there are a large number of new faculty and staff members who are with us today. I think since last September, at this last General Assembly, certainly more than 100 new people have joined the ranks here at Tarleton. And so I'd like to welcome all of those people to, uh, with us today. What I'd like to do is uh, kind of get you to come up in groups, so hold, uh, or to stand in groups so we can see this. Uh, so hold your applause till we get them all standing. So if you've joined the Tarleton family as recently as since, let's say, August 1st, why don't you please stand? Anybody new from August 1st? Okay. Pop up there. No, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. We've got more. But wait, there's more. If you've been here since May 1st, why don't you please stand? There are a couple that started uh, since May. Yeah, a lot more that started since May. And then how about January 1st? Marty, that includes you. <laughs> See, these lieutenant colonels can take direction. And then since September 1st of last year, you would have missed this General Assembly. To each of you, we thank you for joining the Tarleton family and for living out the vision and the core values of this university. So let's thank all of them. You know, the core, speaking of core values, the core value of excellence is at the heart of our college and university-wide faculty and staff awards. And so uh, one of the things I'd like to do is go ahead and have the, the recipients of those major university awards to at least stand and be recognized. And so I'd like both the university-wide and the college uh, level uh, recipients of the OA Grant Excellence in Teaching Award, the Jack and Louise Arthur Excellence in Teaching, uh, Barry B. Thompson Service, Faculty Excellence in Scholarship, Faculty Excellence in Student Success, and then those staff awards, uh, the Horizon Award, Impact, Quality Service, and Enhancing the Student Experience Awards. With the recipients over the last year, would you all stand for and demonstrate to them your appreciation for what they have achieved in, for those outstanding awards? Please stand and thank them for that. <laughs> Folks, stand. Thank you very much. Now you know there are a number of renovation and construction projects that have recently been completed. Some are underway, a lot of them are underway, and there are several that are coming soon. And I'd like to just highlight a few of those. You know uh, you've been uh, struggling to get by it for, uh, for a long time. The Alumni Island and the Green Space is currently uh, still under construction, although we're going to have a great party out there tonight, and I hope uh, many of you can join us out there. The Alumni Island project is one that is really the beginning of a much larger project for this university. Not only does it commemorate our founder in an important way, but it also starts the beginning of a, a very, what I think will eventually be a very impressive uh, pedestrian walkway that connects the east, west, and north, south uh, corners of the campus. We've had a lot of residence halls going up over the last couple of, of uh, years, actually. Integrity Hall, is almost complete. Uh, it's, uh, we have students in there. They're all moved out of the Holiday Inn. 
uh, fortunately, and back into integrity. Uh, uh, still some things to, to do in that hall, but it is a beautiful facility. Then we have Traditions North and South. These are the two halls that are going up on uh, the west or the east side of the football stadium. And then finally, we have what was the Honors Hall is becoming, or I'm sorry, uh, Traditions is becoming the Honors Residence Hall. And I have to stop here and just say to, to Mike Lease a very special thank you. He has been at the heart of these projects and has really done yeoman's work. Uh, let's thank Mike Lease for all you've done. what these things are going to look like when they're completed, and they will, I think, indeed change the character of the campus. Another building that uh, uh, Ted Ford has been waiting for, he tells me, for decades, is finally going to um, uh, get underway here in the not too distant future. This is going to be out at the farm. It's an ag mechanics lab that is going to replace what we call the chicken coop uh, on the uh, on the south side of Washington Street, that old tin building that has been around since the 1930s. He's going to have a first class, I think probably um, best in class facility when this is finished, hopefully by the beginning of the next academic year. And then finally, I'd like to just mention to you because it's, it too is, uh, I, I mentioned this earlier, it's going to change the character of the campus in a couple ways, not only from a beauty standpoint, also from the standpoint of allowing our students to negotiate the campus in a much more pleasant way. The uh, pedestrian mall project, um, infrastructure utility uh, project. Not only is it going to get, uh, uh, get students around campus easier, but it's going to allow them to go across, and all of you, to go across Vanderbilt Street without uh, uh, sandals on, boots on, and all those things, because it's going to deal with all of those kind of uh, water problems that we have on the campus. Now, obviously, this is a very, very full plate for Aaron Wan, our Director of Facilities and Planning, and his S SSC team. Um, these are just a couple of the projects, right, Aaron? I mean, you've got a, a long, long list. Uh, so I want to personally say thank you to Aaron and all of the SSC staff that are here. Would you stand and let us say thank you for your, your uh, all those SSC guys. And it probably wouldn't be appropriate to not say thanks to all of you as well for putting up with the construction fences, the, uh, the orange cones, and all the detours that you've had to live with over the last couple of years. Chief of Police, Matt Welch, you know the chief, and the parking committee. <laughs> have been very busy, you know that. I want to tell you, they helped to plan, I think, a, a terrific new parking system with gated lots and a substantially improved campus shuttle service. This is one of the four buses that we're running on campus. Um, now, I, I expect if I asked you what do you want, you'd, you'd want a covered space, free, inside your building, right? <clears throat> well. We're not going to get there, but, but what I want you to know is uh, because of the good work of the parking committee, Aaron Wan and, and the construction crews, we did add over a thousand new spaces on the campus this year. That is a, a remarkable task and will happen in very, very short order. And the parking committee, I think, has had what um, could only be described as a thankless task. But I'd, I'd like to make sure that it's not thankless any longer. And so I'd like Matt and any people, any members of the committee that are willing to do it, <laughs> to stand. <laughs> any members of the parking committee, look at that, Ben, Aaron, stand up, and Matt, thank you so very much for what you did. Great job, guys. I, I'm getting reports that inside those gated uh, lots, life is wonderful. And I hope you got a donut from, uh, from one of the uh, police officers when you came in the gates the other day, by the way. Very nice touch. Well, one of the things that you know we spent a lot of time on this past year was the 84th Texas Legislative Session. It was good to us, and I want to tell you, in no small measure because of the good work of Dr. Kyle McGregor, uh, our Vice President for Advancement and External Relations, and his partner, uh, David Rahino, on our, state, uh, our state, uh, um, state Relations Liaison Officer in Austin. We were one of the very few universities in the state of Texas to be successful, not in getting just one capital project for a new building, but for getting two. That was quite an accomplishment this session. 
For Stephenville, we received uh, about $54 million for an applied science building that's going to provide labs for agriculture, engineering, and engineering technology. Our hope, if all goes as planned, is that by fall 2018, folks will be moving into a new facility with terrific state-of-the-art new labs. In Fort Worth, we received $39.6 million for an all-purpose academic and administrative building on the new 80-acre campus on the Chisholm Trail Parkway. We think this one is more likely to be open in maybe fall of 2019. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of construction that's going on in the state of Texas in the coming months, and so these buildings are getting in a queue uh, for development. So these are two great accomplishments, and uh, I think uh, all of you are going to be very, very proud to see what happens here at Tarleton because of these two new academic buildings. Uh, Kyle, I don't know where you are, but let me personally say thank you for a great job with the legislature this year. There you are. Now, under the, what I would consider the broad category of coming, uh, coming events, if you will, there are several matters that are going to require your uh, thoughtful input and, I think, very informed participation. These are some important issues for us. Uh, yesterday, for example, you should have received an email from me that addressed Senate Bill 11, uh, the new law that allows a concealed handgun license holder to carry a concealed handgun on campus. Now, you need to know this. Until August 1st of 2016, and this hasn't changed really, a concealed handgun license holder is permitted to carry a concealed handgun on campus in most outdoor areas, except athletic venues. That's, that's the current law. But then effective August 1st, 2016, Senate Bill 11 states that a, a concealed handgun license holder may carry a, a concealed handgun into campus buildings with some exemption, exemptions determined by the university. So what we have done, as every university in the state of Texas is doing, is we've formed a campus carry council uh, to develop a Tarleton rule, in our case, for an on-campus concealed carry uh, uh, policy so that it complies with Senate Bill 11 and that it aligns with uh, system policy, which is going to be developing here in the coming months. Uh, Kent Styron uh, is the chair of the council. I don't know that we could have a more level-headed, unbiased, fair individual uh, to address such a controversy, a controversial issue. Uh, he's joined with representatives that include all the divisions of the university, the faculty senate, athletics, the general student body, gentlemen and uh, ladies, you should know that as well, as well as your student government association, and we have an alumnus and a parent on this as well. It's something that is very important that takes a broad uh, amount of input. The council will be seeking your input, and I encourage you, because I know this will be a, um, a passionate issue for some individuals, uh, they'll be seeking your input. I, I, I uh, encourage you to give that to them as they develop their recommendations in the months ahead. They need to have a recommendation uh, to me by December 1st. And that's so that our recommendation then aligns with what's going to be developed by the system so it's consistent with the larger, uh, mem uh, larger um, uh, university system. Uh, for Texas A&M. So that is an important activity and one that I encourage you to be engaged with. Another topic of importance is the possibility of moving from Division II to Division I athletics. Now, I think you know we started this discussion last January in our annual planning retreat, and then we hosted several meetings in the spring to uh, have uh, discussions about the advantages and the disadvantages of such a move. Uh, I've asked uh, a group led by our athletic director, Lon Reisman, to put together what we're calling a transition plan that assesses the implications of making a move like this. Um, and in that transition plan, what we ask them to do is look at things like what's the impact on budgets and the university profile and how does it fit with our aspirations and our strategic plan. Uh, like we did in the spring, we're going to have some open forums again this semester to bring people to, uh, together to discuss 
the possibility of us moving to the next level of NCAA competition. This is not a decision that's been made. It's a decision that we're continuing to collect input, and we really have no decision to make unless uh, we are offered a bid by another conference. So that's one that, again, I encourage you to be actively engaged in. Then there are a number of other activities you'll be hearing more about in the coming months, including uh, preparations for the celebration of our 100th anniversary as a member of the Texas A&M University system. They've developed a logo and they're uh, meeting under the leadership of Daryl Brown. We're going to continue to have an emphasis on wellness. Uh, Shanna Moody tells me that we have 460 Fitbits on campus right now that you are wearing, and listen to this, 32,795,836 steps, 36 steps per week. Is that right, per week? That is amazing to me. Great job, guys, I'm impressed. <laughs> Uh, these, track, uh, these track athletes down here probably think, what a piece of cake these guys are, right? Uh, but uh, there are still 40 Fitbits left, and Shannon says that the last training session is this Wednesday. So if you still want to get in on that program, you have an opportunity. Um, another initiative is uh, we just had a meeting on Tuesday night with uh, uh, Kelly Steyer and Teresa Davinian, uh, Leslie Spots, Janice Horak. Uh, Kyle McGregor to talk about becoming an all Steinway piano university. Uh, right now we have a very large uh, inventory of pianos, but uh, to many people's minds, it's not a particularly good inventory, I'll put it that way. And so we have an opportunity to really set an excellent standard with this initiative. And then an important one is a presidential task force on relational violence. This is a big issue nationally. You're reading something about it every day in the paper. We announced this last spring, near the end of the spring, uh, but in, it is, and we have done some things like a cross-timber family services agreement. We've agreed with the Stephenville Hospital to help support a SANE nurse, a sexual assault nurse examiner, um, and we have some other things planned, and Karis Fetford is heading that very important initiative, and we want to uh, become a model for a safe and civil campus and establish Tarleton as the way these kinds of issues should be addressed um, throughout the country. Very important. You know, service has always been and will be a part of the DNA of Tarleton. It's not something we think about, it's uh, really just something that we do. We just do it. In our university strategic plan under the objective develop a culture of exemplary service, it, uh, we have a new strategy that was added this past year, and it says establish an annual week of service. That's different. You know of the Tarleton Roundup, where we have a day of service. So next week, beyond the Tarleton Roundup, there's going to be an additional initiatives to encourage every student, every faculty member, every staff member to engage in some type of service opportunity. And through the leadership of Dr. Murray, uh, I know she's in here someplace as well, um, on, among the initiatives of that day is that we're specifically setting aside a, a day in which all classes are going to be canceled to allow everyone, all the students, and all the faculty and staff to participate in some positive and meaningful way. So I think that is a very positive development for us. <clears throat> Now, as we get to the end here, I want to tell you about one other important service opportunity that's going to be coming up here in the next couple of weeks. You know it um, uh, happens every year, and that's the Pass the Hat campaign. It's through this campaign that you can support one or more of some 200 plus nonprofit agencies and organizations that do good for those that may not be able to do things for themselves. I'd like you to take a look at this visit video because it tells more about it and how it is that you can participate.
focus on students, tradition, integrity, and civility through leadership and by striving for excellent service to all who depend on us. These core values are what we hold near and dear to our hearts. However, we Texans have an opportunity to strive even higher and outside our community. That opportunity is serving others. The 2015 Pass the Hat campaign is coming, and the message we can send to the AM system and our community is that Tarleton cares. We know you have it in your heart. Whether that is by giving your time to a family in need, serving your community as a leader, or by giving to the charity of your choice to serve within and beyond our community. There is no right or wrong, no better or worse, when you give what is in your heart to serve the need of others. The process cannot be easier with a monthly payroll deduction or with a single stroke of a pen for a one-time donation to the cause that you wish to serve. We ask that you place what is in your heart into the hat. Then, encourage others to do the same by passing the hat. Please consider giving during the 2015 campaign season. So do you recognize the voice? <laughs> Everybody knows the voice, right? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Anthony Purcell is the chair of the PASA. Uh, Anthony, thank you so much for taking this leadership role. Are members of your committee in here? If so, maybe we could have them all stand so you can uh, see uh, who it is that you can give a check to. All the members of the uh, Pass the Hat campaign, stand up, please. <laughs> So thanks to you and, and thanks to all of you in advance for making this a successful part of who we are here at Tarleton. Now, in the beginning of my comments, uh, I highlighted our vision to become the premier student-focused university in Texas and beyond. A number of the people, the issues, the initiatives that I mentioned today reflect our commitment to getting it right. That means making decisions, whether they be about buildings or budgets, uh, adding new academic programs, adding the core, any of those things that support student success. So we have to keep our perspective, this is our perspective here, maintain our focus on this idea, know who we are, and know who we are becoming, the premier student-focused university in Texas and beyond. We are certainly closer to that than ever, we're closer to that than ever. Let's, keeping, let's keep reaching to make this vision a reality for the students today and in the future. These folks are outstanding representatives of who this university is all about, of what this university is all about, and this vision speaks to them, and they demonstrate why it is that this vision statement is so important to us. Tonight, I hope you all have the opportunity to join us at the Welcome Home Celebration on the Green. It begins at 6 o'clock this evening. There's going to be some great entertainment out there. Best wishes for a great year. Good luck, Godspeed, and go Texans. <laughs>